uh, some thoughts on Acts and chapter 9 and verses, uh, second half of uh, verse 19 through to verse 31. Uh, Saul of Tarsus has been converted and uh, we're getting set up for the rest of the book of the Acts, really, how he would be a key figure. Um, the uh, important ministry that we read about in verse 15, which was uh, informed by the Lord to Ananias to tell to uh, to Saul that he would be a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So here he is, and he's going to be a key figure. And there are three things that we read will read of in this passage, and they are fellowship, preaching, and persecution. Fellowship, preaching, and persecution. And so we'll see, first of all, how he's in fellowship. He is a fellowship man. He's not an independent man who will just go off and do his own thing. He's a fellowship man. So he's with the believers in Damascus. And he's he, he's not only a fellowship man, he's a preaching man. He's preaching the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 20. And he's declaring that Jesus is the Son of God. It's amazing the transformation. He was doing this in the synagogues. He'd originally gone to Damascus with authority to go to the to, to, to authority to connect with the synagogues in Damascus in order that he might play havoc with the church and uh, bring them to nothing. But now he's preaching Christ and establishing the true way in those very synagogues. Oh, how great is the transformation of uh, the Lord. So Paul, Saul is uh, just increasing and he's uh, He's preaching, he's going in verse 22, he's confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. We have to remember in our preaching that we should always be drawing to Jesus Christ, presenting him, proclaiming him, declaring him as the only way. If our preaching is, um, it, it, it is of a nature whereby Jesus Christ is absent, then we, are, we, we fail. We are not preaching as we should. So then we go on into verses 23 uh, through to 25. Many days passed. This is very likely if you cross-reference uh, the scriptures. Very likely the time that uh, uh, the time that um, in Galatians chapter one, whereby uh, Saul Paul had uh, spent time in Arabia and uh, the Lord had revealed Himself and His plans to him. But there is. Um, there is now persecution. The Jews plot to kill him. They do not want to have this man around. But their plot became known to Saul. And uh, they were watching their, their gates day and night in order to kill him. But his disciples took him by night. Uh, led him down through an opening in the wall. Lowering him in a basket. You'll see here again the issue of fellowship isn't it? With the disciples, his disciples connected with his message, disciples of the Lord all together. They're involved. Fellowship, the persecution, but there's fellowship. Let's uh, go to verses 26 through to uh, 30 then. And he goes to Jerusalem. He comes to Jerusalem. And what does he do? He attempts to join with the disciples. He's a fellowship man, you see. He wants to be with God's people. He does not want to serve out of solitude. He wants to serve out of his special connection to the people of God. So he goes. And the people, the, the, fair enough for the believers in Jerusalem, they were afraid of him. They didn't believe that he was a disciple. Remember last time he'd been in uh, in, in Jerusalem, he'd been causing havoc. He'd been, ca he'd, he'd been causing all kinds of trouble for the church. But Barnabas, the good old Barnabas, verse 24, took him, brought him to the apostles and declared how what had happened to him. And that he'd been preaching boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. This beautiful, harmonious interaction. His service is bound in with the church and they're bound in with him. And he's preaching. He's preaching. He's preaching boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus. Great, isn't it? And, uh, verse 29, he's speaking and disputing among the Hel Hellenists and uh, just this great ministry that he's got. But they were seeking to kill him. And when the brothers learned this, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Again, there's this fellowship issue, isn't there? You know, the persecution comes, but the believers are together. They don't just say, hey, mate, you're on your own. You got yourself into this trouble with all the preaching. No, they're there with him. They're helping him. Uh, they're standing with him. They realize he's a faithful servant of uh, the Lord. 
and verses 31 verse 31 then we have a summary verses verse and it's setting us up for what's ahead it goes back to acts chapter 1 and verse 8 the message is to go from jerusalem judea samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth now the first three are accomplished the message is gone judea galilee samaria they have peace and being built up it's as if we're taking stock here it's almost catching our breath god has achieved almost we might say three quarters of his program and then from nine verse uh, chapter nine verse thirty two we'll see how the rest of the program is set up, uh, but it's an exciting development, but look at this it's beautiful to see what a church should be like, isn't it? They're walking in the fear of the Lord and in comfort of the Holy Spirit and being multiplied beautiful things, isn't it and you connect those things the peace being built up walking in the fear of the Lord, comfort of the Holy Spirit being multiplied oh may these things be known even in our own churches, to the glory of our God. So that's some thoughts on Acts uh, chapter 9 uh, from uh, the uh, second half of verse 19 through to verse 31. The Lord bless you.